The NDC parliamentary and presidential primary is over. John Mahama has won, as was predicted and expected. A lot of MPs have won their constituencies, but some 17 of them have been given bloody noses. We'll be doing the analysis of that, but today on Face to Face, I'm engaging someone who was successful, and he was just not successful in his constituency. He increased his win margin bigly. My name is Umaru Sandamado, and you're welcome to Face to Face. My guest is Member of Parliament for Ningo Pram Pram. Uh, he defeated a stalwart of the party in the constituency in 2015 primaries and became the MP from 2017. He is seeking a third term, currently serving in his second term. He has been facing competition uh, since he emerged uh, in that parliament from his own cousin, Michael Quitty. But he has won this time around uh, way, way better than he did in 20. 19. Honorable Samuel Nati George, welcome to Face to Face. Thank you, Amara. How are you? Very well. And I'm how not, are you too? I'm okay. I'm not And how's uh, Bill Kiss and the kids? They're fine. They're okay. very fine. I'm, you didn't wish him Happy Mother's Day. A belated Happy Mother's Day to her. You can I give mean, me a gift to send to her. I, I will, but I would make sure that it gets to her accountability, else I'll send you to the office Don't of special prosecutor. Just, just trust me. Just trust me. You can't trust uh, your brother again. In fact, uh, and the two girls too, they are celebrating their birthday in May, so that one too. Well, then I'll do all together. Thank you very much. I trust you. <laughs> you are getting a grey beard. Is it from the weekend or you are growing this one <laughs> already? I think, I think that maybe it's becoming the signature of whoever sits on the <laughs> chair and go pram pram. You must have gray hair. And, okay. and, and you know, he had a gray hair. I'm keeping a gray beard. <laughs> <laughs> it will get to the head very soon. Unless he starts removing it or you start putting your more like somebody. Uh, I'll learn, uh, maybe I'll have to see Dr. Kwabnadu for, for his hey, uh, hey, magic. Hey, 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 hey. You know, it's just, uh, you said I just have to see somebody. So, and I, didn't I, know. Say, I didn't say see somebody. I didn't mention any name. Oh, okay, that's fine. But I mean, he's got the magic to keep his hair dark. I, I, I think I'll have to. My wife is not ex excited about the grain the maybe, hair as maybe well. Maybe he, he's not grain. That would be a big blessing. Yeah, you know, it's I'm a big sure, blessing. I'm sure he's blessed. My wife is not excited. She says that uh, small boy, and then you want me to be working with you, and you think I'm your my father. So you want to? So she, she will think I did. I will think I, I did. Have, I wing. I have some yomo you can do in the corner. Yo, mm, so I hope it won't leave black marks. Did it leave black marks in the other people you saw it? Which other people? I don't know which other people. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Co 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 <laughs> <laughs> the name Sanjay has mentioned, I have no hand in it. I have absolutely no idea what he's talking about. Let's focus on the main issues now. Um, I will talk to you about your constituency, but let's talk about parliament first. 17 MPs from your side losing. Um, it's a big deal for the party and it's a big deal for the House of Legislature, don't you think? Absolutely. Um, I think one of the key things that we always talk about is the level of attrition in Parliament and the fact that Parliament is like fine wine. The older, the better. And you realize that um, in other jurisdictions that we celebrate and celebrate the the work that their parliaments do or their congresses do, it's about longevity of, of people in there. Um, 17 is quite a big number. We weren't expecting not to have casualties, but I believe not as much as 17. Um, but ultimately, the delegates know best, and um, I can only wish our colleagues all the best. They have one year, and one and a half years to cement a proper legacy. Some of them have already have a legacy, but to build on that legacy and just leave their marks in the sign of time. I don't know if some of them will consider the usual I shall return um, mantra of parliament, but I'm sure we wish them well. Mm. Does a party do work on candidates and know those who may lose and take preemptive measures, or the party allows people to go into the field free campaign and contest whatever happens, they learn it from them, move on? I've never been a party executive, so it would be hard for me to determine or to give you a specific answer on what the party's thinking or role is in that matter. Mm -hmm. I know that the party would have... I, I, I'm not aware if the party as a collective has a position on such matters, like I said, because okay. I don't... Okay. I, even though I sit at neck, most of those decisions are a fake okay. decision. Um, but... <clears throat> 
individuals in the party may have um, affinity for some candidates based on the work that they do and would extend some kind of support. But again, those supports are limited in the fact that the delegates in the constituencies don't take direction from a big man sitting in Accra. A big man in Accra won't just by wave of hand or by fiat direct the delegates to vote in a certain way. And I haven't seen any big man in Adabraka say that this is my candidate in this election, vote for him. Okay. So I, 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 What about the caucus, you know, so the minority caucus? Do you go together and say we are going into a war, so let's hold each other's hands and support each other? Or when it comes to it, everybody have to go back to their constituency and work and retain so that the caucus will be... be well, well, the caucus, again, like I said, there is no... There is six years, I've been here, seventh year now. There's been no conscious efforts to say as a caucus we're doing A, B, C. Um, in the last election, the 2019 one, um, I, I saw Montaka do a few of those. Supporting um, colleagues. Where he and Harana did a few of that, where what they did was they identified weak areas and put together a coalition of like 10 MPs from other regions to go in there and do some work in there. I remember even Montaka, for Montaka, I myself, a black wife, a few of us, about 15 MPs, went and did a health walk with him, engaged the branches there. We spent, I think, two days in his constituency. We replicated the same in Greater Accra, and we, we visited a number of our constituencies. I, my, I saw all the, all, all the, at the time, 13 MPs in Ningo Pram Pram who went to Adda, who went to a few other constituencies. And in this parliament, we even discussed it again. But it's not, it's not a caucus yeah, position rule. Okay. or hard written rule. Mm -hmm. It's members supporting each other. I, I, I was in K2 South okay. to support Jifa Gomashi. Okay. She also came to Ningo Pram Pram to support, to support me. You understand me? Um, so Nilante was supposed to be Nilante was supposed to be in the constituency, but for the um, suits and the injunction and all of those things, and then the last minute. Running around that happened on Friday mm. before the elections. Mm. He was supposed to be in the constituency on Friday, but he was also then pulled by National to help do some of the working that had to do with deployments, and so he couldn't come, but he would have been there. So okay. you have people go into other constituencies to help colleagues, okay. but it's it's not it's not a hard and fast rule. It's based yeah. on relationships. So you talked about longevity in Parliament and how that strengthens the institution. Are you in favour of protecting sitting MPs? Or for you, it should be democratic, go and contest, and if you win, you come back. So I've heard this saying that democracy, the best form of democracy is consensus. I am not one who is against elections. In fact, I think I'm beginning to have a knack for loving tough elections and whooping my opponents. Yeah, product of problematic elections. No problem about tough elections. Tough like, elections. Yeah. Mm. And, and, and I'm beginning to enjoy the, and, and build a reputation as, as one who always finds a way to win those tough elections. And so el I'm, not, I'm not against elections. I mean, <laughs> I sit here because of, as a result of tough elections. Mm -hmm. But there are times when I feel that you can micromanage the process. Okay, for example, I, I don't believe in the carte blanche protection of members of parliament. I mean, that would be self-serving, and that would stifle fresh breath. I would not have emerged if, if that was the case. Um, Alassane Tuini would not have emerged. John Jinapo, Okujito Ablaka, we wouldn't have emerged if yeah. you were protecting, okay? Today, some of us are celebrated within our party and outside of our party because of the democracy of elections. But I, I believe that when it gets to a setting stage, there are, there are times when setting persons have to be protected for the sake of the party. For example, I would subscribe to a view that says that the leadership of the caucus should not be contested. Because I'm asking myself why Kwame Abuja, who is my whip, should have faced the contest. Why did he have to go to work to a contest? Because as whip, he should have been deployed into areas where MPs who are critical in the chamber but have challenges on the ground will get support. Will get support. But he was stuck in his constituency. 
I think Atu Fosin also had a contest. Why? You understand me? And, and, and I believe that a certain cadre of... And, and, and the party must begin to look at how we manage these things. It must be on the back of research. Okay? Um, this eighth parliament, our caucus has lost a certain legal, legal Fire, backbone. Firepower. Absolutely. You had Inusa retiring voluntarily, but you had someone like Cletus Avoga, who was a critical legal brain of the caucus, losing. Not to say that the, his replacement is not doing a good job, um, the Honorable uh, uh, Peter uh, Lanchene Tobo. Mm -hmm. Fantastic guy. You are not talking about Cletus Avoca, you are then talking about uh, the former MP for Wild West. Wow. Cletus wow. Avoca is um, yes. Zebila. I think Zebila. Yes, he has retired. Yes. You are referring to um, his name is this. Yeah. I, I just got You know, but Cletus also had to leave. Mm -hmm. Cletus lost. He didn't leave. I thought he didn't contest this I, weekend. I, I, no, not, not this one. He lost the last election. Yeah, but he came back. Cletus is in parliament now, isn't he? Yeah, Cletus is back. Yes. But no. Uh, you are referring to former, Wawa's... former, former health minister. Yes. Yeah. He's the one you are referring yes. to. Um, yes. Yes. His name is just He's from Wawa's. Yeah. Wawa's. Exactly. Peter Tobo comes That's out. where from Peter. Tell, mm. I mean, big, big character. Mm. You understand me? And 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 we lost that. And so if it's it's put a lot of you've had to see the likes of Bahama Yariga step up and the likes of uh, Ayine also filling the blank. So it is. It is those issues that, for me, so are friend critical. Joseph Yilichere. Yilichere, absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. you know? and, 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 and I think that at a certain level, you need a fine blend of experience and a fine blend of youth. You know? And so I'm not for the carte blanche protection, but I believe that on the back of research. But an MP must not only be functional in the chamber. You must also be functional on the ground. On ground yeah. You understand me? Because the MP represents or is a function of the presidential votes that, the, the, you, you, you multiply effect. Okay, so the votes the party will get in the presidential is a multiple of your functionality as a member of parliament. You have to work yeah. it out. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So if, you, if, if a member of parliament, and, and I hear that under the Rawlings administration, 9296, that, that, that was done, there was a part, a, a, a wing in the party that had a matrix that looked at your role in the constituency, your role in parliament, and then your role in the national political, and built a grid. They had weighted averages, and on the basis of that, they graded the MPs, and on the basis of that, they'll tell you, you, nobody will contest you, or you, you'll be contested, you'll be contested or in fact, don't contest. Oh, okay, okay. And, and I so think that, like that. But yeah, because if you look at the House of Commons, for example, leadership is not contested. But you see, um, if you consider what you've just said, the MPP side lost a lot of seats in 2020 because there's a view that the party protected some of the MPs at the primaries. And so when you go to the national elections, they lost. Don't you think that, that's that why I said it must be on the back of research. It's not a card blanche thing. So it, must not not be, it must not be on the basis of this person supports this person in the party. Or this person's godfather is so this person. Be and absolutely. And that's why I said you must look at the functionality in the constituency. If you protect a, an MP whose who's, who's functionality quotient is low. or coefficient in the constituency is low, you would lose that seat. Okay, but how about you protect a minority leader and then he goes to the main elections and loses? How about that? Because that, there would always be a contest. It's well, not going to well, be easy. Well, it, will the minority leader be someone who, except you're saying the minority leader is someone who's already lost his his constituency. And then that person should not even be minority leader in the first place. In fact, of late in, 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 in our universities, if you were going to contest SRC president, you must have a certain grade point before they allow you to contest. So for you to be minority leader or be in leadership, you must have, you must have a certain grip of your constituency such that if we didn't make, if we protected you from a contest, you already have enough goodwill and you've done enough work in your constituency to have a multiplier effect for but us. But if you also did so well and your grade points are good, then you shouldn't be worried about an internal contest. It's not about being worried about the contest. No, it shouldn't it's about, stress you. It's, it's, about, it's about the utility of those people at that time. Okay. Okay, because like I gave the example, Kwame Aboja should have been moving. Okay. Boa should have been moving. Okay. Atu should have been able to move 
more than they were able to do. But they have their own stumbling blocks. Do you think, aside the leadership, old members of the House, so someone like Collins Dowda, he's not a leader, but he's been there for ages. Um, I don't know who else. Muntaka, 2005, Haruna came before him. So those people, yes. you think that people like that should also be protected, or you just want the front bench safe? No, I mean, and that's why I said, it, once again, it must be backed by research. And I, I made a point that there's a need for experience. There are times when, in the House, when it gets chaotic, and there seems to be bedlam in the house. When Collins rises to speak, Raji Collins Dauda, there's respect. Every side goes quiet and everybody listens. Because he's a senior in the house that we respect across the aisle because of his longevity in the house. It's the same way when Bagbin was MP for Nadoli, when there was chaos in the house and Bagbin rose. No matter how agitated Michael Quay was, he would he would grant him audience, and nobody on nobody in the NPP would heckle Bagwin when he was speaking. So there is a certain benefit to longevity. Okay. Today, Haruna is not leader, but when Haruna rises to speak, there's respect. I'm wondering who on the NPP side can heckle him. Okay. You, you understand me? Okay. And, and so th there is there is something that. Rashid Pelpo, um, um, Mahama Yariga, um, Eric Opoku. There is something at that front, that line, that, that line just behind the leadership brings to the table. Mm. You know, today if Avoka uh, uh, stood up to speak, mm. or if Kluge Averji stood up to speak, mm. Mm. you know, they, they carry a certain weight. It, and you see the same thing on the MP side. side. I mean, when, when in, the, in the rare occasions when Katie Hammond graces the house with his presence <laughs> and speaks. <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> Please, no, no, Katie Hammond, you've been coming to the house regularly. <laughs> Don't mind some but What about the idea that your party at the national level has sent people to go and remove some people? For instance, Abdul Rashid Pelpo had a contest of his lifetime. Uh, Muntaka Mumba was challenged. In fact, he has even been quoted as saying that people wanted him removed. The national wanted him removed. That's why what we saw in Aswasi panned out. How do you deal with matters like that? I, I disagree with respectfully with the view that the party sends people after anybody. Individuals in the party may have scores to settle. But I disagree that the NDC went to FEC which is a second highest decision making body, or NEC is the second highest decision making body, but FEC is the administrative decision making body of the party. They bring their decisions to NEC for ratification. That FEC sat and said, this MP, we want him out. So you, national officer, go and go and create problems. You, we want him out, so you go and contest. No. It will not happen I, I, that way, but I don't, if, I don't think, but so that's what I'm saying. So you cannot say that the party has taken a stance against anybody. That is something I will not subscribe to. But I agree that individuals in the party mm -hmm. used their positions to try to settle scores. So if those individuals are not stopped, it's almost like a tacit endorsement by, by the party. Not necessarily. And that's why I have called on our current leadership. I have absolute trust in the leadership of John Sinasido in Ketia as national chairman and Fifi Fiabi Kwete as general secretary. These are two fine politicians. I have, abs I have no shred of doubt in their capacity. I want their legacy to be one of discipline. It's good you mentioned Fifi Kwete. I want their, I, uh, because they, they need to instill a certain level of discipline in the party. And I've seen John Sinasiri Nketi as general secretary do it when he sacked Koko Anidoho and Alute Jacob from the party. Look, we must not be afraid to sack or discipline people or reprimand people, irrespective of who they are. If John Mahama airs, discipline him. If Sam George airs, discipline him. Haruna, discipline him. When you do that, it sends a signal to the rank and file of the party that in this party, discipline reigns. But when you allow people to misbehave, and you say, oh, he's an elder, oh, he's a big man, oh, he was there in 92 or 79. The person is misbehaving. We must come to a place where discipline is instilled. If a national executive goes into a constituency and foments problem, a regional executive, a regional chairman, 
creates problems in a constituency. Deal with the person. Discipline the person. There's this view that the people who have lost or some who struggled, they struggled because the National Party said they were part of the 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 unpatriotic or what's the word? The the people who broke ranks and voted for NPP minister nominees. Has that come to your attention? I'm not aware that the party labeled anybody as a breakaway. Your general secretary did not. Did the Honorable Fifi mention any names to you? Yeah, he mentioned some names on his like, WhatsApp platform. No. On his WhatsApp platform, he put out names of people he said thank you to yes. for not betraying the cause. He, he, put out, he, put out, he put out less than 50 names. Yes. So are you saying that then we should have had, what, 137 minus, minus my, my 50? My is not good. 80 there. We should have had about 87 people losing their seats. So you don't think it had any issue? It, the, the, what we saw had nothing to do with that. I, I don't think so. The party didn't put out any any particular position on that. This is face to face on City TV. My name is Omar Sandaman. My guest is the Honourable Samuel Ati George, MP for Ningo Pram Pram. Uh, he came out uh, wearing. Okay, he went into the contest wearing green. I don't know whether later he wore white for the <laughs> celebration, but he he emerged victorious at the end of the primaries. Uh, just like many other colleagues, but several others also lost. When we come back, we'll talk specifically about Ningo Pram Pram. City TV is live on DSTV. Go to channel 363. On Go TV, access City TV on channel 182. On a digital TV, please press the menu button on the remote control and run a new search on your TV. Take note that without an antenna, you cannot access City TV on your television. City TV can be accessed on a free to air digital box like the Go TV and Star Times box. City TV, it's your world. Hey, welcome back. This is Face to Face on City TV. My name is Omar Rosanda, but we are discussing the NDC parliamentary and presidential primaries for the weekend. Someone at George uh, won handsomely in his constituency to represent the people in 2024 at the polls. I mean, um, you looked very comfortable at the polls um, in, in terms of the results that came out. What new thing have you done? Because the last time you lost, you won by seven votes. And you Did jumped. you say I lost? No, no, you won by seven okay. votes. <laughs> and, and, and I think you even did better against ET than you did the last time. But this time you raised it top notch. What did you do? I've worked. I've worked and carried out the mm -hmm. mandate of the people of Lingo Pram Pram. I've served them with all my heart. And they see that, I mean, the delegates are human beings. They are rational beings, they think. And, you know, I, I granted an interview before the election and on the morning of the election where they said, don't I fear delegates? And I said, I trust the delegates of Ningo Pram Pram. Because in six weeks when I engaged with them, I, I heard them. I listened to them. They didn't hide what their challenges were. They didn't hide what their feelings were about the work I have done where there were shortcomings or perceived shortcomings, they asked me and gave me the opportunity to prove to them whether what they, in, what they had been told was true or not, whether what they had heard was right or not. And, and once I put before them evidence, incontrovertible evidence, they made it clear to me that we're comfortable, honorable, we're good to go with you. And so that's why in the earlier part of this conversation, I spoke about the work as MPs you do in the chamber must also reflect on the on on, on the no. ground you know you must engage with your people we've, we've 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 done quite a lot of work and i keep saying that the delegates are a microcosm of the general population if you look at what happened between 2016 general elections and 2020 general elections you shouldn't be surprised to see me appreciate amongst the delegates because the delegates are picked from the general population in 2016, I moved the margin of victory, which my predecessor had, of 3,000 to 10,000. In 2015, when I became candidate, the margin between NTN and people was 3,000. In 2016, we won with 10,000. In 2020, we won with 30,000 margin. So it tells you that between 2016 and 2020, we are putting a lot of work. 
and the general public had rewarded us. I keep saying that when your kid goes to school, the only way you can tell your kid is learning is when you get a report card. An MP's report card is the pink sheet every four years. The votes what, you get. The numbers. On the you. numbers. That's your pink sheet. That, that's your report card. Because when an MP does something for you, 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 you can't do anything for the MP. The only thing you can do for the MP is to go out with your family mm -hmm. to vote for his party as a way of thanking him. And so that is a mark of how well a candidate or a parliamentary candidate or an MP is doing. And so post-2020, we haven't rested on our oars. We, we've been pushing. I mean, post-2020, as soon as we got 50,000 votes in that election, again, don't forget, in 2016, 26,000 votes. We doubled it literally to 50,000 votes. I said to myself, the target is to double this to 100,000 in 2024. And so we'll be working towards that. So that's the general elections. You're yes. expecting to win 100,000 votes. To get 100,000 votes for the NDC. In your constituency. In Ningo Pampa. Even though your voter register is not up to 100,000. No, it's not. So how are you going to get them? You import voters. <laughs> there, 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 there are a lot of things. that were, There will definitely be a limited registration exercise. And we've already identified and we're still in the process of identifying more persons who are residents in the constituency but have their votes outside of the constituency and in the last election didn't even go to vote. Okay, for ease of voting, you, you help them to transfer their votes into the constituency. Becoming... It, it's the fastest growing district in the country, okay. Okay, both industrial and residential. And so there's, there's a huge population drive in there. And even when you take our 2020 register, voter turnout was 63%. Okay, so if we are looking at how to identify more of the individuals, I have, a, I have teams that are working currently. They've been working for over, over six months picking the register and identifying, trying to map out addresses of individuals on the register so that we're able to identify these people, to mobilize and prompt them. So when we talk, it's, it's, it's driven by data and science. It's not, there's a lot more which I won't share here because, mm. I mean, uh, it's you, a strategy you've, got, issue. You've, got, you've got those who know you are my name. But the point is that numbers-wise, you had, what, 90,000? The last time, um, fifty thousand votes. No, I mean your voter register, register yeah. ninety about ninety eight, almost ninety nine thousand. And you are hoping that people who live in your constituency who don't have their votes there, you register them. Yes. But are you also thinking of importing people from Sege and and Charles to go to come and register? In fact, them? in the last elections, we left some of our people there. We left some of our people there. People who called me from Isojaman, who normally will come and register, you know, we said no, stay there. We've got in our buffers. We and, and that for me is a thing of strategy again that the NDC must look at doing. Because you know, so, like so, so Ningo Pram Pram didn't we didn't we, we actually gave off potential votes. We didn't bring in all of our votes. If we had brought all of our people home, our vote register should have gone. And and it's something I'm looking to do. You know, most of the time when the registration is done, most of the people in Ningo have gone for upload. What is that? Oh, only upload. Charlie upload, Charlie Mono Jim. Send what I'm going to do. What are you doing? You know, but but upload is basically when our people have gone out on fishing expeditions. Okay, okay. You know, we Guinea. Have, we don't have the sea. You don't have the sea there. But they go, they go to Equatorial Guinea. They go to oh, Abidjan. Okay. You know, and you've got almost half of your able-bodied male and female population. Out fishing. Out fishing. They're fishing in Equatorial Guinea. They're in Malabo. They are in uh, Guinea Conakry. They are in Liberia. And they're not they be are... around for the election. So, so you see, when you're able to register them, they come to vote. So the thing now is to make sure that we're able to bring them early enough once we get the time, because again, they have to break up Lodo and come. Okay. So you need to be able to identify where they are, their numbers. You know, at times they come by bus. At times you buy premix and then they come on the canoes. And it's not just the men who are gone. The women are gone because the women are there cooking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. you, you realize that you go to a village and you see the population on the voter register. And you're like, no. There should be more. No, my guy. During Homo War. Because up Lodo ends just before Homo War. Okay. Okay. So during Homo War... They are all back home. And you know the numbers in the town. And you look at the register. And the register is 600 people in a police station. No, like, doesn't match No, up. I mean, this town, I have like 2,000 people yeah, here. Yeah. OK. But in terms of the delegates election, which, which is what you've just done, it's different from the main election, isn't Absolutely. it? Because this one, you have a target that you're working yes. with. 
And how do you get your delegates to vote for you? And I'm not asking you to give all your strategy out. Delegates like, as in the parliamentary primaries yes, I'm or general to, no, election? I'm referring to the parliamentary primaries. Mm. How do you manage delegates? Because they always say fear delegates. What do you have to do to make sure you don't fear delegates? You said you trusted them. What do you have to do? There's money involved. Being, in, being in honest with them. Being honest with them. It's simply, I, I, for me, I wear my heart on my sleeves. Okay? I'm, I'm as plain and brutal and frank as it comes. I met delegates and I said to them, you, you did this and I don't like it. And people are like, you don't talk to delegates like that at this time. I said, no, he did something I don't like. I'm letting him know that he's done this, I don't like it. It's the same way when I do something he doesn't like, he should feel free to tell me. We're all human beings. And so I've been human, I've been real with my people. My people know that this is Sam George. They know that when you do something and I like it, when I come in front of everybody, I say, hey, Papa, we, or you say, oh, I will celebrate you. When you do what is also wrong, I'll tell everybody, hey, you did this thing. Mm. Next time, don't do it. And we move on. And I don't, I don't bear grudges. So it's, I think that for me, being real with the people, being real with the delegates, they appreciate it. And they've appreciated my honesty, my candor, and, and the fact that I'm just human with them. I'm not putting up airs. I'm not trying to impress anybody. I am me. The day I feel like wearing a tattered jeans, I wear tattered jeans and go and go and campaign with my trainers. The day I want to wear a suit, I will wear a suit. The day you want to wear camouflage, you wear camouflage. That was election day. It's only election day. <laughs> How did the ET factor play out in your consciences, parliamentary primaries? Did it matter? Do you still have an ET factor in your consciences? If it exists, it is minimal. Is it not the prom prom side of things that you can describe as the ET zone? Has that been diff easy for you to penetrate? I, I, you know, we had two polling centers. Mm -hmm. Oh, you didn't have one center? No, we had two polling centers. Okay. One had from Uchebleku through Mobole, through Afienya, to Mataheko, Laluekpo, that's 25, Dowenya and Miocho. Okay. And then the other one, and in that area, in that area, I, I had 454 votes. My opponent had 307 votes. My opponent lives in Mataheko. Yes. He says he has houses all over in those areas. Counted the number of houses for people. Please, I don't know in that those, he has houses. In those, I know that in he lives those, in I'm telling you what he said. Ah, he was okay. everywhere. He said he had houses okay, everywhere. That's fine. I just want to say that I didn't see that I, he has houses. I, I, you, you should study him because it means he's able to sleep in multiple houses one night. But in that area, <laughs> I beat him by one, almost 100 100 and over 140 okay. votes. In his zone? In his zone. Okay. Then you come to Ningo. The mm -hmm. second station had Ningo and then Pram Pram proper. So Both the two upper together. and lower. Okay. And Ningo. And Lekbouno. Yes, Ningo, Lekbouno, the whole of Ningo traditional mm -hmm. area. So mm -hmm. all the way to Dawa, mm -hmm. to Panchendo, Chopoli, mm -hmm. Nibenya, all of those areas. Good. There, I had 582 votes. My opponent had 319. So My opponent is from Ningo. Yeah. Just like you. Yes. So in both, in every part of the constituency, so you mean you beat him in his house of residence and beat him in his home of origin? Simple. That's what you have done. And if this was Mortal Kombat, you would hear finish him. <laughs> fatality. I don't I don't play cartoons. I've ran out the cartoons okay. the children played. Okay. So it was I, fatality. Uh, <laughs> you know? Okay. So so, so I'm just but, I'm so, trying but, to establish to you that that factor you allude to doesn't exist. Because the strength, in fact, I do so well in the Pram Pram area. Possibly better in Pram Pram than in Ingo. Okay, so and, and I'm grateful to the people of Pram Pram for accepting me. So you are saying that that factor that was there, which is where ET Mensa comes from, it's diminishing and possibly even non-existent. That's, that's I, I that's consider what, it non-existent. That's what you are looking at. Yeah. Was he in the campaign? Did he play any role? Um, yeah, behind the scenes, we knew that he was playing a key role for yeah. my opponent, and he, he's, and he and, supported you. Even when I greet the person, he doesn't want to respond. Uh, you have me. not smoked peace pipe. I don't smoke anything. No, like peace pipe. You having? I, I don't smoke. I, I I don't have a problem with anybody, but I can't determine what problems other people have 
with me. But again, in these elections, the chaos that we saw that stopped the elections for one hour happened after he came. We saw him arrive. We saw him arrive with a group of boys. And then all of a sudden, after he voted and left, then they started an agitation. You know? He, he and had, he, so what, he said something or did something? You should ask him. He's your very good friend. Yeah, he's my grandfather. He's, he's my, my... So you've not made up but, with him. But, but, Are you sure made up with him on what? I mean, you know, I don't have a problem with him. I mean, he's MP. He's my constituent. Have you extended an olive branch to him to say that let's work together? You need him on the campaign trail, don't you? Which campaign trail? The main, main elections. You've forgotten what happened in 2016. Yeah, but that's history. You've forgotten what happened in 2020. Yeah, but you still need him. All you are guided. We are guided you want by 100, history. 100,000 votes. His thumb is very important to get 100,000 votes. I want to believe that because he still says he's a member of the Council of Elders of the NDC. No, he will he, vote for the NDC. Yes, he's... he's so he, it's he not about what I do or say. He is. I saw the meeting with Kamado before the, 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 the focus for me He's a is member of the Council of State as well. Under the MPP. No, the, under the, the government. The, 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 the focus for me mm. is on the people of Ningo and the people of Pram Pram. What? And, and for me, it is their mandate that matters to me. And their mandate is not determined by any one person. Their mandate is determined by the work I put in and the message that I send there. So anybody who thinks that there is some one figure be sitting somewhere who will say, do this, if it was possible for that person to have that influence, I won't be sitting in this office. Michael Kwete, how are you going to relate with him moving forward? He's your cousin. You've defeated him this is a third time. Or is it second, second time? Second time. The first time he was disqualified. Was he disqualified or he withdrew to support it? No, he was disqualified in 2015. Okay. He was disqualified because in 2012, he, after he lost to E.T. in 2011, yeah, no, no, no. no. After he lost to E.T. in 2011, <laughs> he defected and went to the NDP and became their parliamentary candidate. Yes. So in 2015, he had not been a member for four years. To qualify. So he didn't qualify and okay. was disqualified. So then he went and supported E.T. against me, and, and I, I beat them. The two of them. Yes, and I beat them. And then 2020 beat. elections, he also did skirt and blouse, campaigning 09010, but we won. Okay. And then 2019... He came again. We beat him by seven. The 2020 campaign, he was absent. He was never on the campaign trail. But we won again by a margin of 30,000. Okay. Now we've won this one. And we're going into 2024 fully focused on achieving 100,000 votes. How are you dealing with him? E everybody, everybody, everybody who loves the party is welcome to join the campaign. Has he congratulated you? Yes, he called me yesterday. Yesterday morning. We had a barely 45-second phone call where he called and said he had, he was sorry he didn't call the previous day, he was sleeping, but um, he had just called to say congratulations. And I said I was grateful and I wished him well. Have you invited him to join your campaign? I'm not inviting people. Will you give him a role to play, maybe your campaign manager or something? Oh, I have a campaign manager already. Mm, you can put him on secondment. Oh, no, he's welcome. He's welcome. See, yesterday he's when, welcome. When, he's when welcome. former President Muhammad did his um, congratulatory address, jo, he could you go and do for there? No, no, we saw. So then, what's the point saw, you're we making? Saw, we saw for some people. Did for some people contest President Mama? But it shows a sign of unity. Yes, there's unity. On my campaign trail, his campaign manager in 2019 was on my campaign trail. It shows you unity. I united the teams even before the election. Is, is he the lady that he said he wanted to marry? Which lady? It's said a guy, Alaji. This is a this is a guy. His name is Shehu Osman. Ah, uh, because there's a lady he said he wanted to marry, and then... no, I took strong exception to that because Ningo Pram Pram should not be dealing with people who are promiscuous. Because at the time he was contesting in 2019, he was legally married. So he was married and he was trying to have an affair. But you and he was what he proudly said. Say, yeah, I'm saying. And that, he that, said that, that he wanted itself, to marry and the lady said... No, he oh, said he wanted, to, he wanted to date the lady. Yes, and she said she was not. And at that time he was a married man. So as a married man, he's proudly stating that he was trying to have an affair behind his wife's back. I don't know about what time he said that. But this he, was in 2019 when we're going into the last no, election. No, he said that this is a lady no. he wanted to date and the lady said, no, me, I don't do men. And that lady is now in your campaign. Has he mentioned the lady's name? No, but he said the lady is in your, in your campaign. Which lady is in my campaign team? The, I mentioned... She he also said smart. the chairman of the LGBTQ community who won the national something something is in your campaign and that you are the one benefiting and claiming that you are anti-LGBTQ. That's the reason why the delegates rubbed his face in the mud. Because of those petty, evil, wicked lies. Lies that made the devil shout blood of Jesus. 
because the devil couldn't believe that a human being would sit down and formulate such evil lies. So the things he was saying about you prior to the election is a basket of lies. Which and the people, the people, the people, the delegates saw through the lies. Some of the lies, Umaro. You see, and people will say, oh, Sam, be magnanimous in victory. Why? When the person was attacking my person. It's your blood relation, oh. Don't forget that. Uh, why, blood is when, when, than... when he was attacking my person, I wasn't his blood relation. No. Attacking me, attacking my wife and children. Let's go. Were, were, were my wife and children on the ballot paper? No. So why go after my wife and children? Why say that I'm using common fund to take care of my wife? And I'm using common fund to buy a Land Cruiser? Why? And you see, it is how, it's how unintelligent some of the lies were that made the delegates realize that this person is a joker. Because you see, everybody's in this country and knows every four years. They give you a car, whether I like or not. There's a car loan, and MPs get bashed. Then you go and tell them that the common fund is given to me, and I keep it, and I'm using it to buy a car, and using it to take care of my wife. Why, did, did you see my wife's face on a, on a ballot paper? So those who are saying, oh, Sam be magnanimous, when he was doing that, you didn't have the brain and the mind to caution him to be careful about the things he was saying. People say politics, oh, politics is a dirty game. No. Politics is a noble, is a noble art. Dirty people play dirty politics. And we must call and name and shame them to make politics clean. Clearly, you are not going to bother yourself asking him to support you. And you are, you are going into this campaign with or without him. I'm and going into this campaign with the best political machinery in this country. You don't care about him at my, all? My, my campaign team is one of the most efficient team. And to Team Jata, Charlie, I salute you guys. The work those men and women have done. I'm just the face. But they are the main engine from, from Dawa. From, in fact, from Koli Kablu all the way to Uchebliku, the team is active, working on the ground. And for me, I salute and respect their sacrifice, dedication, and hard work. And they are my focus. Anybody who wants to come on board is welcome on board. Have you, but will, I'm not will you going forgive to, him? I'm not go forgive him. Let go and let God. Oh, I forgive him a long time. Ah, it's, it's, it, is, it, is, it is human to err and divine to forgive. I also pray to God for forgiveness. So I've forgiven, but I haven't forgotten. Who is Petit Wa? Dabi? Ye hene te. Kesi no komo, ko na popolio, o ma yile gbe I'll translate that. If a snake bites you and you see a worm, you'll be scared. This is face to face on City TV. My guest is someone at a George. Speaking Dangbe, he speaks several other languages, but this is Dangbe he's speaking, Bubla Dangbe and Ningo Dangbe. When we come back, I'll ask him about the LGBTQI campaign that they have in Parliament, a group of eight MPs. One of them lost the primaries. Was he targeted because of that? Did it play any role at all? Please stay with us. City TV is live on DSTV. Go to channel 363. On Go TV, access City TV on channel 182. On a digital TV, please press the menu button on the remote control and run a new search on your TV. Take note that without an antenna, you cannot access City TV on your television. City TV can be accessed on a free to air digital box like the Go TV and Star Times box. City TV, it's your world. Hey, welcome back. This is Face to Face on City TV. Prior to your election, two groups issued statements asking for a support that should be given to at least eight members of parliament, you included, because of the bill that you currently have before the House. Did the bill you are promoting in parliament play any role in your primaries and the primaries of your other colleagues? It will be dishonest for me to say it didn't play a role, especially I can speak for myself in my constituency. And being one of the lead advocates, um, for the bill, um, you basically become like the arrowhead and you've been targeted um, to ensure that the bill doesn't see the light of day and all of that. But I'm, I'm most grateful to the coalition. Um, the coalition is made up of several groups like the, the Christian Council of Ghana, the Ghana Pentecostal and Charismatic Council, the National Association of Charismatic Churches, um, the Catholic Bishops Conference, the Ahmadiyya Muslim Movement, the Office of the National Chief Imam, the Coalition of Muslim Groups, 
advocates for Christ and to put for a group as powerful, such a powerful religious group grouping, to put out statements of support went a long way. Again, the office of the chief imam through the coalition of Muslim organizations, COMOG, and uh, the Ghana National Muslim Students Association actually came into my constituency the Sunday before the elections and met all the Muslim groups, uh, Muslim delegates, and spoke with them. I know that several churches held prayer sessions, um, and some had fasting and prayers for, for, for our elections. And look, the support that I enjoyed on this campaign even transcended the NDC. There were senior people in the NPP who called me and prayed for me. There were NPP people who called their friends who, they, who were delegates. I had delegates who called me and said, hey, honorable, an NPP person called me and said that, Charlie, he's NPP. But for this LGBTQ thing you are doing, pa, dear, he supports you. And so we, the delegates in NDC, should not make a mistake to change you. It would be dishonest to say they didn't play a role. It played a big role. They thought, you know, that the Bible says that they, 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 they thought it for evil, but the Lord turned it around for good. Even in, in Islam, we say that they plan, and Allah plans. The and, best of but plans. the best plan is, is so, Allah. So you benefited from it, but also were you affected by it? Oh, yes. I mean, it, 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 the, when, when it came down to the resources, you'll always have people who who will be swayed by the allure of material things. And, I mean, there are all kinds of promises made. I mean, people were promised houses. By who? By, by Delegates were promised houses, cars. For one thumb? For one thumb. Someone was promised that they would take her to China to go and, to go and shop, to go and buy things and come and fill her store. I mean, but if there's any promise of, like that, it would be from your opponent. You had, only, you had only one opponent. Or do you have invisible opponents in the constituency, aside the ones we saw? Uh, but you know that they were invisible opponents. You know so, they were there. So they were telling people not to vote for you, or they oh, were yes. telling people to vote for person A. Vote for person A, and we'll, we'll do this for you. And he, too, was running with that campaign. I'll take this, this for you. So he accepted to be sponsored he, by them yeah, against you? As to accept you or whatever. He was making them those large promises. Yeah, but my point is that the group that you are, so the yes. LGBTQ yes. community, Yes. I'm guessing you are saying the ones who are making the promises of buying houses and cars for the people. Yeah, they made, those, they made, they made yeah. those offers. But whose mouth, who was your mouthpiece for that? They used your direct opponent as he a mouthpiece. He was the one campaigning, yes. He made those promises. But is there any proof? And, and I, can, I can begin to, I can mention names of branches and delegates specific who were made promises like that. And you can prove that the money he was going to use for that is money from... LGBTQI community. When you ask me, I can prove I'm not his bank manager. Then it means that it is his personal money. So it's not the LGBTQ community that is doing that. that I that's, just wanted to that's, get a that's, distinction. That's, that's, that's your inference you're drawing. But everybody knows how the LGBTQ community runs. They operate not just in Ghana, across the world. They put their money where their mouth is. If and, and you know, you know, six weeks to our elections, yeah, my opponent was invited to the US. He traveled to the US. You know, I'm um, sure he's been going to the U.S. all the time. Okay. Did he go there to do anything? <laughs> Tell me. Well, let me know. If he went there to do anything, maybe. I've, I've, put, I've put out the information that's there. But like I said, oh, the beauty of it, the beauty of it is, the beauty of it is, despite all of their best efforts, I had, I had always made a comment that this was a contest between light and darkness. Okay. And that light would triumph over darkness. So, I mean, and light triumph over he, I'm sure he had the U.S. visa maybe before 2015, before you... You, you see, came. because we've, we're done with the elections... You don't want to go back to the There's no need history. to go into the details. Okay. Ah, look, then let's for, mm, let's I can give you an itinerary. Okay, then let's look you, at... You know how I operate. You know that when I want to dig, so, I, I get my so information. So you have Give me one thing before I move on. Uh, you, let's move on. What happened to your colleague then on the eight-member group, De La Soa? Well, um, oh, she lost. She lost to Sebastian Day, mm -hmm. and um, I, I, like I said, I wasn't in her constituency, so I don't know the extent of. I, I, I've spoken about my constituency okay. relative to the LGBTQ. Okay. I don't know what happened in the other constituencies, okay. but I think that it will be a fair thing to look at the antecedents 
in her constituency. In the last primaries, how did she fare? Okay, so we should, okay. we should not lump all so together. That, yes, how did she fare? How did it look like? Okay. You understand me? Sebastian, they came second in that primaries. The margin was quite slim as well. In the general elections, how did she fare? In her general election result, mm -hmm. what was the margins? Okay, did that pose a threat to the seat for the NDC? Was that a consideration for the delegates in her constituency? So there are a lot of factors that, that come really to play. Okay. You know, so it would. I, I, I'm, I'm careful not to just jump up and say and, and over, over, give too much credit over ascribe things to this faith, faceless lovers of, of, of canality. Hmm. Let's talk about some, uh, Mr. M <laughs> you just thrown me off here. Former President Mahama has also won ninety-eight point nine percent. Yeah, yeah, uh, pretty much. Very big man, uh, big match there that he has. He has it's won a big by, man, so big margins. Yeah, big man, big margins, and all of that. What is he coming to do again? Well, he spoke about it in his um, acceptance speech. The fact that he, I keep saying that elections about speaking to the hearts and the minds of people. When I read his, when I listened to his speech yesterday, and I've read it. I saw that President Muhammad's speech was tailored to speak to the minds of people. And I anticipate that when he hits the campaign trail, he'll speak to their hearts. But today, people are thinking with their minds before their hearts, okay, because we're in a mess. And so when he, for example, says that the next NDC administration is going to appoint only 60 ministers, that's a, that's a thing that is on the mind of many Ghanaians, the size of government. It has to be reduced, okay? making a direct commitment and saying that my appoint, appointees will have to sign that bond to also let go of their ex gratia which is another topical thing on the minds of the Ghanaian people. He was speaking specifically to their minds. When he spoke about the licenses of collapsed banks, for example, that will be restored, those are critical things that matter to the mind of people. I, I know that if you read that speech and your colleagues in the media fraternity, you'll be excited when he said you would work without fear of intimidation from government. Because today you're working under fear, with, with a lot of fear from this government, where you heard him say that he would come and investigate the murder of your colleague, Ahmed Swale. As media men, he's speaking to you because it was Ahmed Swale five years ago. It could be you tomorrow, God forbid, touch wood, okay? And so when you have a... a Man who seeks to lead this country say, I would ensure your protection. You'll be guided by that. When he talks about fighting corruption robustly and ensuring that the agencies of states to fight corruption are well resourced, then you know that it's, a, it's going to be a departure from the mother serpent of corruption, who is currently the biggest purveyor of corruption and, and enabler of corruption in our country, the current president. So he's speaking basically to the minds of the people, and we will speak to their hearts I, as well. I, and when he says there will be that government advisory board, for example, that will have civil society and a review of our constitution, these are the things that civil society have been pushing and aching for. So you see clearly a man with a vision, with a roadmap, and a plan to execute. I've had people who are quote unquote neutral who say that, listen, I would, I think that MPP has messed up. I would want to vote for NDC, but if they had changed their candidate, I would vote for them. They brought the same old candidate. So I'm not really sure. What would you say to such a person? I said to you that the worst version of John Mahama is better than the best version of Nanado or any other person the MPP would bring. Because there's nobody they're bringing who's not been part of the mess that we are being in, we're in. None of the, front, of the leading contenders is, can absorb himself from the mess that we've seen here. John Mahama left a legacy that is enviable and a track record that is proven. Most of the things that you were told that made you cringe at John Muhammad were lies. Blatant false lies, evil and wicked lies. And that's why they've not been able to prosecute him or establish any of those things six years, seven years into their government. John Muhammad repair, represents the, the safest pairs of hands for the repair mission of Ghana. Vote John Muhammad. Honorable Samuel Nati George, congratulations and thank you for joining us on Face to Face. Sinabe, that has been Face to Face for today. My name is Omar Sanda. I want to keep watching City TV. It's your world.